So in this video, I'm gonna fit a windowsill board. I'm fitting an MDF windowsill board, which is really, really common now. I would probably say that 90% of windowsill boards are MDF. When I started my time as a carpenter, we always used softwood or hardwood, and MDF really only came into play around about 95 to 2000, I would say. So what we do is we're using an aluminium window frame here. It doesn't have a groove. You might see on the back of a window board, it has a tongue, and that used to go into any window frame made in a joinery or a factory, always used to have the same size groove. So you'd fit the window, you'd put the window board in, and all you needed to do, that kept it perfectly straight, and it also allowed for shrinkage, because softwood or hardwood will shrink in its widest dimension. So by having a tongue, you'd fit it, you wouldn't glue it in, it'd be a loose tongue, and if it ever shrunk, you, then it wouldn't show, it wouldn't show a gap. And indeed, if you go and look at an old house that's got painted window boards, I bet you'll see that the paint has often cracked there where it moves and it cracks and it moves. So we will still get a tongue on the back of an MDF windowsill board, but don't worry about that. We can just leave that on and that can butt against whether it's a plastic window or in my case, an aluminium window. So the theory behind this is quite simple. Uh, the detail is whatever we overhang, we sail around the corner and we also finish the ends off to match the front. They're generally a half round and then we send the half round around the corner and it's just a really nice detail. Quite often in new builds, I've seen that they just chop them off square and it's dead straight. And I just think that that's a skill loss. I know that some carpenters on site are under pressure. They only get a certain amount of money per window board. They haven't got time to mess around because they're gonna get paid the same money regardless of whether they spend the extra 10 or 15 minutes to make that really nice detail. This is our window board. Now this is a standard width and it actually worked for us. There are different widths that you can buy off the shelf. Now this gives me around about 28 millimeters of projection. There's no hard and fast rule about how much projection you should have. So if you get a board and without having to rip it, you've got this much, well actually that may be acceptable as well. Indeed, some people like a slightly wider board if they wanna use their window sills. Now you can cut that with a chop saw, but I'm gonna do it all by the hand saw, so I think it's easier to just to demonstrate you don't need any fancy tools to do this. So the first job will be to make, cut the board to your overall length, okay? So that's a very simple job cutting it all the way through. And if you're using a chop saw, that will give you a nice clean edge. With MDF, it will show the saw cut. So once I've cut it, I'm gonna make sure it's nice and clean afterwards. So what I want, what you'll see is you're gonna, the end of the board is gonna have some saw cuts in it. So it's best to clean them out before we do any other work to it, okay? So just take a little plane, or even a block of sandpaper, and clean them out so they're gone. And then you've got a really nice edge, because actually that forms part of the front as we mold it round. So we'll do that on both sides. So we've got a nice clean edge at the front. Now we're gonna cut the reveals. So what that means is, we're gonna be taking out where we're gonna be hanging over the front. So you can do this by measuring the center of it easily. A small center line on my board. Let's just pop a small center line on the center of the window. And then you'll offer up your board on the center line here. And that is exactly what you need to cut off. Now, because we're putting our plasterboard on, we can allow three or four millimeters to get it in because it's gonna be covered by our plasterboard that comes down, all right? So we haven't got to cut it too tight, okay? So that's where we wanna be, the same on the other side. And then what we're gonna be doing is coming around the corner. So again, you can put your window board in Offer it in like this and actually mark the plasterboard like that. And because it's going to be skimmed, 
you've got three millimeters going on there. You haven't got to be hard, you know, really hard to there. So that's what we'll be taking out. The same on the other side. This is just a quicker way of doing it than trying to measure it. You can just do it in situ like this. Mark here. And that is what we're taking out. So we're gonna go and cut that out now and then shape the ends. You can, as I say, you can make them tight as you want, but if you've got cover, like we've got with the plasterboard, which means the plasterboard face is here, then we've allowed a little bit of airspace. And then it's just a matter of cutting these out. Now it's at this point where some people on site leave that end just like that. But actually what we want to do is return that around the corner. So we'll just get the other end ready as well. We'll cut in the reveals first. So this is the window board before we've made the ends round and before we've plasterboarded our reveals, which will be there. So the last thing before we fix it is to make the ends round there. So this is what some people do, they leave them square, but it's just much nicer to fashion these round. So to take this molding by hand and return it around the side is a really simple job. So we basically do this with a plane. So we would mark a small margin all the way around. And then what I'm going to do is using a small plane is start beveling that off to those lines. That's the very first job. We turn it over, we do exactly the same on the bottom of course. The next job is, I always count the number of strokes with the plane, is we then take this off. That's there, that's exactly what it is. So it's one, two, three. Same on that other side. One, two, three. Now, we've already got the formation of what we're looking for now. This is the only time you ever see a carpenter with sandpaper. It's a very simple job of looking at the front edge and you can actually see, as you sand it, this shape appear perfectly symmetrical to itself. Just to take off those ridges, and then you're forming exactly, let's turn that that way so you can see it. So it's just literally a tickle. And that gives you the exact profile around the end. I mean, it's just a lovely little detail that, and simple to do, it takes a couple of seconds. Let's do the other end. I'll run that by you one more time. So it's roughly six millimeters everywhere. Okay, I say roughly, it doesn't need to be exact. It's, you need to leave this bit. It's no good putting a line there. You'll be far too much. You need to imagine how much you'd take off this end to match this. Now, in fact, I, don't, I generally don't even mark it normally because you just know how much it is all, all the time you've been doing this for many years. So you can see this job is a, a few seconds. Okay, it's that. It 
it's that, and then it's this. Watching this profile, that's giving you all the clues. So you don't need a router, it's an absolutely, typically easy job without. And it only needs to take a minute or so, that's all it needs to take. And there you have it. So if you see people that don't do it on site, the fact they haven't got two minutes to spare is absolutely crazy. So this time, I've cut my window board to length. I'm gonna clean it up like I did before with the plane. If I'm using a chop saw, you don't really need to clean it up. But when you're using a hand saw, it's not gonna be a perfect finish. So you do need to clean it up with a plane, quick tickle, take those saw cuts out here. And then what we need to do is route this one. So by using a router, we actually speed the process up. Not by much, but if I was doing a whole house, I'd have my router out, a palm router, and a rounding over cutter, which matches closely to the window board. There we've done it with the router, and then we'll still take a bit of sandpaper and just ease it round. Let's do the other end of that board, and then we'll cut it in and get it fitted. So with the router technique, you saw that I actually made quite a lot of cut before I actually did it. Now the reason for that is, if you try and do it afterwards, you've got hardly anything for your router to hang on to. And the chances are, the bearing could slip round the corner and actually cut, start cutting back on that return. So we're using the material here in our favour before we relieve it for the reveal. There's various ways of fixing a window board. Now in my case, I've only got a very small window board here. So I'm actually gonna glue it down because I've got my plasterboard reveals, which will actually go in, get screwed in, and actually hold it in place too. On a really good polymer adhesive that will stick no problem at all to timber, to this plastered edge here. We can just leave it on the insulation there as well. Just get a load across there and we can go all the way through the back here, and ne there's never coming off. The other good thing about this is as well, it will bed it down exactly level, so you've got a little bit of play. If you wanted to tweak the level at all, then that will also help you as well. But the principle is simple. We're gonna drop on our window board, give it a little move. I mean, it's already really grabbed it there. Center it up, God, it's hard. hard to even move it after that. And that's it, keep it nice and parallel to the window. And now all we're gonna do is screw our plasterboard reveals in. And that is a window board done. It's a super simple job. It's a first fix carpentry job. Something that anyone could do with a router or indeed just a small plane and some sandpaper.